Hey team, welcome back to my channel. We are going to create a foreign key that will support the no action update and delete statements. Remember, no action is used by default. If you leave this off of the constraint statement, this is what you'll get. You'll enjoy this video and learn quite a bit. So let's do this. In version 6.2. In this video, we are going to be creating a foreign key on two tables, parent-child relationship, where the action is no action on both the delete and update. Now, what that means is when the parent data is deleted or updated, no action is performed on a child. So in our parent table, notice that we have two columns and three rows of data, solid, liquid, and gas, values one, two, three. Let's go ahead and uh, create that and let's insert that data perfect that's done now on our child what we have is a item id a matter id and a description and that's kind of easy to understand but now i'm about to create a foreign key between these two tables now there are two rules the first rule is you see matter id is an integer it must point to an integer. So matter ID points to, guess what? An integer. That's rule one, success. S rule number two, a foreign key must point to a primary key. I come up here, oh, it's a primary key. Rule two is successful. Now, a primary key is great, but we can also say create unique index on matter ID, and that will work as well. But primary key is the preferred way. Now, why do we want that primary key? Well, we want a one-to-one -one relationship with that right there. Make sure that we can always find that. Now, the alter table, I'm gonna alter table child. Add constraint, this is the constraint name. Now, foreign key is matter ID. So we say a foreign key points to a primary key. A foreign key points to a primary key. That's what we say. Now it references table parent, and this is the column that it references. And then this delete is no action and update is no action. Let us create this table. Let us alter the table and add this foreign key constraint. And then let's insert some data into that table. And there we have set up the environment. We can now do our unit. Let's do some unit tests. Notice table parent, one, two, three, solid, liquid, gas. And then in our child table, notice that we have values, matter ID. This is a foreign key to this primary key. And then we're going to do our first test. Notice it says delete from table parent where matter ID is one. Well, we have a foreign key on this. And in this parent table, what this is saying, let's remove this first line. But that first line is the parent to these three lines. So what does this no action mean? When the parent data is deleted, no action is performed on the child. But what will happen is here, when I try to delete this line, because these three lines still exist, this will fail. Let's see what happens. And then notice we get a, it violates the foreign key constraint because one still is being referenced in table child. That's our first example. Let's look at this next statement. It's the update. So I just showed you the delete. Now we're going to work on the update. So update table parent set matter ID to four where it's one. Let's look at that data. Now that's saying let's turn this into a four. But we know that there is a relationship involved here, and we have a bunch of ones over here. What do you think is going to happen because of this no action? Well, you guessed it. This is going to fail. And it's saying, hey, matter one is still being referenced in child. You can't do that. Let's look at table parent. Notice one, two, three. And now I'm going to try to say insert into table child where the matter ID is one. Well, as long as this 1040 is unique, this one right here is going to be easy to do. Let's execute this. Execute. 
and notice that was success. In our second example, notice that I'm going to try to insert into table child where the matter ID is for. Now, if I look at table parent, notice there is no for in here. So trying to insert this statement, it will fail. It will fail because the foreign key. Let's execute this and see what happens. Ready? Notice I get an error on insert or update. The foreign key has been violated. For is not present in table parent. And that is the no action foreign key Postgres SQL. And there you have it, team. No action foreign key. This is the default way of doing it. Now, you've learned quite a bit in here, and hopefully you'll be able to implement this. So this is the default way. Practice this, and then practice makes a master. So I appreciate you supporting my channel, you know, subscribing, comments, and thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing you back in my next video. Have a great day.